fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. A short time before war broke out between Mexico and the United States, a Mexican officer, Captain Lampazos, who had camped with a company of soldiers in Mexican territory a few miles from the border, paced nervously in his headquarters tent. Caramba! The sergeant should have returned before this with the Americano gunman. Perhaps the gringo has changed his mind about helping us, Lieutenant. I feel certain he will come, Capitan. Remember, this fellow, Buck Jackson, is an outlaw in his own country. He will do anything for money. He is the type of man we need to get what we want. I understand he has several outlaw followers. We must persuade him to use his gang for our purposes. Well, that must be the sergeant with Buck Jackson now, Capitan. Bring him right in. Very well, Capitan. Oh, so you have come at last, sergeant. The Capitan is waiting for both of you. Come in, come in. See, si, senor lieutenant. Oh, this is Senor Jackson. Senor Jackson? So you are Senor Buck Jackson, eh? That's right. I am Captain Lampazos, and that is Lieutenant Hanos, my aide. Glad to meet you, Captain. Now, suppose we get right to the point. I see you are a man of action, Senor Jackson. Sit down, please, and I shall explain. Sure. <clears throat> Go ahead, I'm listening. I shall be as brief as possible, Senor. These are troublesome times. It may be that war will come. Word has been received that the United States has annexed Texas and has admitted it as a state. The Mexican minister has withdrawn from Washington. Mm-hmm. Reckon your country is still sorry that Texas won independence a few years ago, and it rivals you to have it join the United States. But what's all that got to do with me? Personally, I don't care who's running things across the border. You are perhaps one of few across the border who is not bothered with such a feeling as... A loyalty, senor. Now, if that's supposed to be an insult, you can find someone else to do your dirty work, Captain. Do not be angry, senor Jackson. It is only because you lack such a feeling that you will be of value to us. You will be well paid for your trouble. All right. All right, go on with the explaining. Senor Jackson, I must ask you to have respect for Capitan Lampazos, an officer of the Mexican Army. I'm not in the Mexican Army. I came here for a man-to-man -man talk. Now, if I have to think about bowing and scraping... I am sorry, senor. Forget it. I shall continue, senor Jackson. 
His Excellency, El Presidente Paredes, has called for preparedness. Now, here is where you are needed, senor. I have requisitioned more rifles and ammunition. A dispatch came to me stating that there were none to spare. I must arrange in some other way to get guns and ammunition. Oh, I'm beginning to savvy now. You want me and my men to turn gun runners for you, is that it? That is putting it bluntly, my friend. The uh, sergeant told me he uh, he worked with you a few years ago, and he mentioned some of your uh, activities. Carlos had no business shooting off his mouth. Anyway, whatever he Do told you. Do not had... be alarmed, senor. <laughs> we are not concerned with those who break the laws of the United States. My main concern is getting rifles and ammunition, as I told you. And I'm inclined to think you and your men could get them for us. Yeah, maybe we could. But it'll cost you plenty. We are ready to pay. You know where you might buy them in quantity without suspicion? When Carlos met me in Laredo last week, I told him I knew where to get him. That ought to answer your question, Captain. Of course. Uh, by the way, senor, did the American authorities recover the two wagon loads of rifles and ammunition that were stolen in a raid a couple of weeks ago? Just what you talking about. I understand some outlaws working with hostile Indians raided a small wagon train. Two of the wagons were said to contain rifles for Fort McIntosh near Laredo. Everyone with the wagon train was massacred. Listen, Captain, if you want rifles, don't ask so many questions. Savvy? <laughs> Have it your way, senor. Carlos tells me you're clever, but you'll find a way to get them across the border. My men and I are smart. We always wore black hoods when we went into action. We're not known as outlaws by sight in Texas. Good. Have you a plan? Not yet. Perhaps I have. So far, our people are permitted to bring in corn and grain from across the border. Well? The sergeant, posing as a Mexican rancher, already purchased several wagon loads of grain and sacks from a farmer outside of Laredo. He also arranged for wagons to transport the grain across the border, using his own drivers to load it and bring it over. Just what's that got to do with our proposition? You and your men will load the grain and bring it over, senor. Tomorrow, you'll make your first trip using three wagons. Go on. The border guards at the bridge will inspect the load and find it is really all grain. Tell them there is more to come. But the rifles... The we... following day, you'll come through again. But then you'll have the rifles and ammunition in the bottom of the wagons covered over with tarpaulins. On top of that, you'll load more bags of grain. The guards are sure to remember you and let you through without examining too closely. Say, that might work all right, Captain. I feel certain it will, senor. Now, how do I know we'll get paid? I want half the money now, just to be sure. <laughs> we haven't agreed on a price. There'll be 100 rifles and the ammunition. I'll settle for $5,000. Too much. I'll pay 3000 And we're taking the risk? Forget it. Say 4000 No more. Well, all right. Half now? Half now. And if you do not carry out your bargain, senor, remember... We know much the authorities in Texas would like to know. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, had been in the northern part of Texas when they heard reports of the gang operating near Laredo. They arrived on the outskirts of Laredo on the afternoon of the day Buck Jackson had talked to the Mexican captain. As the Lone Ranger disguised his features so that he could appear around town without his mask, he discussed the situation with Toto. I understand the crooks use hoods to hide their identity, Toto. Uh -huh. When me hear a raid, when them steal rifles, me think maybe them Mexicans who come across border and get help from renegades. That's possible. But the border is so closely watched these days, I doubt that a gang of Mexicans could cross so often without suspicion. That gang has committed several robberies in the past month. Me not think of that. Gun running into Mexico would be a profitable business right now for crooks who are willing to take the chance. You think maybe war come? Well, I think it may start at any time. Even a slight border incident might cause one side or the other to take up arms. That's not good. War is never good. But it may be necessary in this case to stop Parathes from reclaiming part of Texas, as he seems determined to do. There. I think this disguise will be all right. 
Um, what we do now? We go into town and look around. We'll leave the horses here and go on foot. The Lone Ranger and Tonto left their camp and walked through the town as far as the bridge across the Rio Grande. They noticed that two soldiers from the nearby fort were on guard. Later, the masked man and Indian went to the cafe and entered. The two men sat at a table near the end of the bar. The Lone Ranger casually observed the crowd. He had no reason to notice Buck Jackson and two of his gunmen standing at the bar until his attention was drawn by a short conversation with the bartender. I'll pay for what we had, barkeep. Give us each one more. Here, take it out of this. Hold on, mister. You've been in here before. You want to know we don't take Mexican bills right now. A Mexican bill? Well, what Looks the... like you've got a couple more of them in that What of yours, too. All right, forget it. Here's the United States gold back. We can't squawk about that. I'll take one of them any day, mister. Now I'll get you a drink. Hey, Buck, they jipped you. Make sure when you get the rest of the cash, they Shut don't... up, Shorty. The Lone Ranger noticed that Buck looked around hurriedly at the crowd as though worried that someone might be listening. Then he gulped his drink and spoke to his two companions. Come on, let's get out of here. Got a few things to talk over with you and Kel before we leave in the morning, Shorty. I'm ready to leave. Yeah, so am I. But I still don't know how you plan to go through with the deal. And as far as I Forget can Forget it see... for now. Let's go. Come on. Those men, especially the tall one... Seemed on edge about having the Mexican bills, Tonto. Ah, but it not strange. Other times we hear them take Mexican money in cafe, stores. I know, that's why I can't quite figure out why that fellow should seem upset about having some of the money. Well, perhaps I'm being overly suspicious. Let's get back to camp, Tonto. Ah. The following morning, the Lone Ranger, again wearing a disguise, walked with Tonto along a side street of Laredo. The two men paid little attention to three loaded wagons, which were being driven toward the border bridge, until a vaguely familiar voice caused the Lone Ranger to look sharply at the wagon drivers. Get a blue line up there, bud. Oh, keep your shirt on. Get up there. Tonto, the men driving the first two wagons are the ones who were talking in the cafe last night. That right. He remembered tall fellow. Him give men at bar Mexican bill. And they're heading for the bridge to Mexico. I wonder what they have in those wagons. Uh, me wonder, too. We'll walk down to the bridge and watch them as they pass the guards. Come on. Uh. Since the three wagons moved slowly, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the American end of the bridge almost as soon as the wagons. As the two men arrived, the guards were questioning Buck Jackson. What do you have in those sacks, mister? Green. Here's a bill of sale. Yeah. Calls for a lot more than you have on those three wagons. That's right. We'll bring through the rest of the sacks tomorrow morning. The guard and his assistant went from one wagon to another, poking the sacks on the top layer in a lackadaisical sort of way. Then initialing the paper, he handed it back to Buck, saying, I reckon you're carrying grain all right. You didn't check the sacks on the bottom, soldier. Who are you to be buttoned in, mister? Just a citizen who wants to make sure no contraband is going through. That's all. Don't pay any attention to him, Buck. Get going. I still think you should examine the contents of those wagons more closely, guard. Listen, mister. He already told us to go ahead. Now step back out of the way or I'll give you a taste of this whip. You seem mighty anxious to get across. I told you to shut up and stand back. And this will show I mean it. Buck raised the heavy whip to lash the Lone Ranger. But as the end of it snaked out toward him... No! Let go. The masked man grabbed it and yanked hard. The unexpected strong pull on the whip, which was looped around his wrist, dragged Buck from the high seat and sent him sprawling to the ground. As he sprang to his feet, he reached toward his holster. I'll fix you. Don't draw. Hold it, Buck. No use having trouble now. Buck stood a moment, glaring at the Lone Ranger. Then he slowly mounted the wagon seat. Why, don't leave yet, mister. We're going to have a look at the other sacks. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
unable to continue. The two guards again examined the contents of the wagons, but this time more closely. The Lone Ranger and Tonto watched intently until they'd finished. They're carrying nothing but grain, mister. Seems like you were mistaken in thinking they might have contraband. I apologize for my suspicions. I don't like hombres who interfere in my business, mister. I'll make it a point to see that we meet again sometime soon. And when we do, you'll be sorry for trying to make a fool out of me. Get up! Get it! After the three crooks left with the wagon loads of grain, the Lone Ranger and Tonto went to their camp on the edge of town. The Lone Ranger put on his mask. Then, as he and Tonto saddled Silver and Scout, he spoke. There was something about those men that caused me to suspect them, Tonto. Uh -huh. I was rather embarrassed when the guards found the wagons carried nothing but grain. One of them said last night at the cafe that he didn't see how they intended to go through with the deal. And the tall one, Buck, seemed afraid of being overheard. That convinced me they're up to something. Oh. You think now we make big mistake? I'm not sure, Tonto. Oh. What we do? We'll backtrack on those wagons and find out where they got that grain. Uh, let's go. Easy, steady. Easy, 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 easy fella. Come on, Silver. Come on. The masked man and Indian easily backtracked on the wagons along the side street. And before long, they approached a deserted farm. They cautiously followed the wagon tracks to the old barn where they dismounted. Good, 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 good. Easy, Scotty. The house and buildings are all in very bad condition. Ah. Me not see any horses. Me not think anyone here. We'll move cautiously in case someone might be watching. First, we'll investigate the barn. some sacks of grain. Not enough to fill those three wagons again, though. Mm, that right. We'll count the sacks. Quickly, the two men counted the remaining sacks. There was nothing else of interest in the barn, so they cautiously approached the house on foot. Careful investigation showed no one was there, so they entered. Hmm. Someone's been staying here from the looks of things. Mm, that right. We'll search the place. We may find something that will help us. Men coming, Kimasabi. We don't want to be trapped in here. We'll go out the back door. Come on, out through the kitchen and hurry. Uh -huh. The wagons went through all right the first time. Tomorrow they will carry some. Hey, somebody went out the back way. Come on. Look, I see two hombres out through the window. They're heading for the barn. Use your guns, quick. Wait, don't waste bullets. They went around back of the barn. Let us go after them. No, they'd shoot us when we went toward them. They're riding away from behind the barn. It's useless to try to shoot them now. Yeah, I hope they not discover the rifles in the cellar. We better see if they broke the lock to the cellar door. Hey. The padlock is still here. We got here just in time. We'll go behind the barn and pick up their trail. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto used their experience to cover their tracks before they finally returned to their camp near town and pulled to a halt. Who's oh, who's oh, easy, 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 easy now. Easy, fella. You think we on wrong track, Kimasabi? It's possible. That farm is deserted. It's being used for some purpose. We not think men who come there, same ones who drive wagon. No, they didn't have time to go across the border and get back. We'll keep out of sight until tomorrow. I want to see the wagon loads they take to the bridge at that time. Early the next morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left their camp near town and rode to a wooded grove, from which they had a clear view of the farm. Oh, 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 Though he had again disguised his features, the Lone Ranger wore his mask. The two men noted that the three wagons were drawn up at the back door of the house. There are more than three men, Kimosabe. Them bring long boxes from house and put them in wagon. Those boxes are similar to the ones in which rifles are shipped, Tonto. Ah, I figure they intend to put a layer of the grain sacks on top of those boxes. Then they'll attempt to get by the guards at the bridge. Well, maybe if we wait at bridge, we get guards to search wagon like before. Oh, it would be better to close in on those men here. 
And all those involved would be caught. And them too many for us. Yes, I know. The fort is only three miles from here, not far from town. I'll give you a note to Colonel Hart. He knows we were coming down this way, and he'll remember you. Maybe wagons leave before me get back. I think those men will wait a couple of hours before leaving, so that the same guards will be on duty at the bridge. I'll ask the colonel to send enough soldiers back with you to capture them. I'll wait here for you and watch them. Now I'll write the note. Get off, scout! Soon, Tonto left hurriedly with the note. The Lone Ranger watched for some time while Buck and his men loaded the three wagons. Then the wagons were driven to the barn to be loaded with the remaining sacks of grain. The Lone Ranger decided he'd have a chance to get inside the farmhouse and do some more investigating. He cautiously moved along through the tall brush, and then, with gun ready, pushed open the front door and entered. Hmm. They must all be at the barn now. The masked man went into the kitchen and saw the cellar door standing open. Oh, look down there. That's where they must have hidden the guns. He found several bundles of army blankets in one corner. Army blankets. This begins to tie in. These men must have been the ones who rented the army wagons not long ago. Hmm, something on that shelf. Black hoods. We've found the hooded outlaws. The masked man turned and went back upstairs. As he stepped through the doorway into the kitchen, he suddenly felt a gun at his back. Freeze, mister. I'll plug you. All right. I saw you get down there when I looked through the back window as I came towards the house. Hey, Buck. You hombres are just in time. What the... Master. Yeah, I happened to see him going into the cellar. I waited till he came up and I got the drop on him. Good work, Cal. Loosen your gun belt, mister, and let it drop. Go on. All right. Keep him covered, men. I got his gun belt. Let's take him out into the front room. Get moving, you. Now sit down. Yeah. Now what? We must find out why he come here, Senor Buck. Yeah, but first I'm going to take off his mask. All of you keep him covered so as he can't try any tricks. He's bad over. With five others standing with drawn guns, the Lone Ranger decided it would be useless to resist. Moreover, his identity was protected by the disguise under his mask. He merely smiled as Buck stepped to him and cautiously removed the mask. Eh, hey, what? Hey, you're the same man who tried to interfere at the bridge yesterday. Yes, but I wasn't satisfied to let the matter rest. Now I know the truth. But it isn't going to do you any good. You not get a way to tell anybody what you found out. <laughs> the Lone Ranger looked around at the group. He realized that Tonto should be back by then, but he wanted to stall for more time. Who said I wanted to tell anyone? That's the only reason you'd be snooping, mister. You were too anxious to get us picked up at the bridge yesterday. Maybe I caused a commotion knowing that the guards wouldn't find anything, so that they'd pass you through this time without any bother. Yeah? And why would you do that? <laughs> Well, you can't blame a man if he tries to get in on a good deal. Hey, perhaps he's one who might be of use to us, Buck. Look, Carlos, he's not fooling me. The reasons he gave are too flimsy. Yeah, but since he wears a mask, he must be an outlaw. Or maybe after all... Now, wait a minute. I've been looking at this gun belt of his. He's got mighty fancy guns. And the bullets are made of silver. Silver bullets? Holy mackerel, what do you make of that? I make plenty of it. I've heard of an hombre who wears a mask and uses silver bullets. He helps the law. He's called the Lone Ranger. What? You think this man is the one you've heard about, Buck? I sure do. And he's going to be sorry he came snooping. Now get up, you. Go stand with your face to the wall over there. Get up! All right. What are you going to do, Buck? Use him for a target. Then we'll bury him in the cellar where he'll never be found. The Lone Ranger thought quickly. He was determined not to go down without a fight. Yet he was without his guns. As he walked toward the wall, he passed close to Shorty. Suddenly, his hand flashed downward, striking Shorty a paralyzing blow on the gun wrist. I'm not dead yet. Come here, you. At the same time, the Lone Ranger swung behind the outlaw and grabbed him as a shield. Let it go, will you? That isn't going to save you. No! The shot came through the window. You drop guns. The other gunmen, afraid of hitting Shorty, had held their fire. Now they saw troopers behind Tonto and others standing in the kitchen doorway. Drop your guns or my men will shoot every one of you. We haven't got a chance. They're more at the windows. We must not be taken to fight them. Hold it. No. You better drop your guns before we're all plugged. Oh. 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 
All right, pick up the guns, men. Hello, you arrived just in time. Tell me, come on foot to look round. Me see trouble, get others. Lieutenant, you and your men will find wagons at the barn in which these men have hidden army rifles. Black hoods are on a shelf in the cellar along with bundles of army blankets. They intended to drive the wagons to Mexico. These must be the men who are known as the hooded outlaws. The same ones who raided those army wagons. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, here, gun belt, Kimasabi. Oh, thanks, Tonto. Tonto and I will ride ahead to the fort, Lieutenant. We'll wait there until you bring these men in the wagons. All right, sir. The colonel will want to thank you in person for finding these men. If it hadn't have been for that interfering masked man, we'd have been all right. Men like you, Buck Jackson, don't deserve to live in a decent country. The price of treason comes high. We'll see you later, Lieutenant. Come on, All right, fellow. Uh-huh. All right, some of you men go get the wagons. Yes, sir. We'll take along the blankets and the hoods as proof that these men were guilty of the raid in which some of our men were ambushed. But I was not with them. I am a soldier, a sergeant of the Army of Mexico. We had a dispatch that war will soon be declared. You will have a chance to state your case at the fort. It's a good thing for the United States that we have such a fine, loyal American here in the West. The Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 